I've ranked the Cedar Fair parks, then the Six Flags parks in America. Now let's look at the independent parks. Some of these are family owned, others are owned by a company, but this is their park and that's it. It's not part of a chain, whether it be big or small. Adventureland just joined Kennywood and other small parks as part of the Palace Entertainment chain. Indiana Beach is part of the new Gene Steeples empire, and Kentucky Kingdom joined the Hershen chain last year, so you won't see those on this list. So let's get into it. These are my top 10 favorite independent parks. Before we start, if you could drop this video a like, I'd appreciate it. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I think I've been to most of the good independent parks in America. The one I haven't been to that might make this list is Canopy Lake Park. They have Yankee Cannonball and Untamed, so the lineup is kind of light, but maybe the park has some charm and that would push it onto this list. Let's look at five parks that are too small for my top 10, but deserve some recognition for still being awesome. Cultus Lake Adventure Park, Cultus Lake, British Columbia, Canada. This family park has a tiny footprint, but the way they cram everything in there looks great. It's like one of those micro parks in Roller Coaster Tycoon. The park has a Zamperla Mine Train Family Coaster, as well as an SPF Spinner. This was a really cool park to stop by on my way between Silverwood and Playland. Bay Beach, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I love the atmosphere of this park. It's a public park owned by the city, sporting a playground and free parking and admission. No gates or security or anything like that. Just with a bunch of carnival rides, a giant Ferris wheel, and one of my favorite wooden coasters of all time, Zippin' Pippin'. If I lived in Green Bay, I would seriously be here all the time. The rides are cheap, the food is cheap, and I think it's a one-of-a-kind experience in America. Lakemont Park, Altoona, Pennsylvania. Here's another park that resembles a public park. You walk in, pass by the basketball courts, and cross wide open grassy spaces to get your ride tickets. Skyliner is a major wooden coaster that's right by the baseball field next door, and Leap the Dips is the oldest coaster still operating in the world. It's one of the most free, wide open parks I've ever seen. ZDT's Amusement Park, Seguin, Texas. The main draw of this family fun center was the arcade, but they did have a few small rides. And in 2015, they got a great shuttle wooden coaster, the only one of its kind in the world. If you're near San Antonio, you have to drive an hour east and see this place. The ride is great, and you have to marvel how they crammed it into the zero space they had for it. I'd love to see more of the place next time I'm there and not so rushed. Arnold's Park, Arnold's Park, Iowa. This is a really small park. I think the parking lot is bigger than the park itself, and it sits right there on the shore of Okaboji Lake. The Legend is a super smooth and fun wooden coaster, and the Wild Mouse may be the jankiest thing ever. If you're driving from Valley Fair to Adventureland, or vice versa, I do recommend it. Number 10. Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, Santa Cruz, California. This has won 11 of the last 12 Golden Ticket Awards for Best Seaside Park. It's not hard to see why. This place is packed with rides. It has a long skinny layout. Not really a true boardwalk like the Santa Monica Pier, but it's right there next to the beach. It even has two levels to cram more stuff into there. The star ride is the Giant Dipper, a great old wooden coaster that's turning 98 years old this year, and based on my ride last year, is still running great. Undertow is a really solid supporting coaster, and Sea Serpent is a great coaster for kids with a really cool setting. The rides here are kind of pricey, and parking on a busy day is kind of a nightmare, but once you're in the park, it's a really fun time. Number 9. Luna Park on Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. I just made a whole video for this park earlier this week, so if you want to know more about it, check that out. Coney Island really has two parks blended together, the other being Dino's Wonder Wheel, but for this purpose, I'm only including Luna Park. Here's another seaside park, just on the other coast, and this includes another classic wooden coaster, the Coney Island Cyclone. This is another coaster pushing 100 years old, but still running great. Samperla has been running this park since 2010, and they also have a hand in the park at Oa down in Alabama, and apparently they don't operate that park like they operate this park, so I consider it independent. There is a good mix of Samperla coasters here, from their Thunderbolt, the Soren Eagle, Steeplechase, and some rides for families and kids. It's not overly priced either, but beyond the Cyclone, you're not getting anything really great. Number 8. Maury's Piers, Wildwood, New Jersey. We continue with our seaside parks, this one actually being on a boardwalk. I should say, three boardwalks. They have seven coasters, one major one on each of the three piers, and you'll definitely get all your steps in trying to ride all of them. But don't worry, you won't have to worry about your wallet weighing you down. These rides are very expensive. It cost me $75 to ride all seven. It has the quantity, but also the quality. Great Nor'easter is the best SLC, Sea Serpent is the best Boomerang, and Great White is an above average wooden coaster. It would be nice for them to get something modern, like a Eurofighter or a Raptor, but these rides are worth your trip. Just be aware of those prices and the way the piers are spread out. Allow yourself a lot of time here and put on your walking shoes. Number seven, Waldemere, Erie, Pennsylvania. Here's another park on the water. This time it's Lake Erie, but honestly, unless you're on Ravine Flyer 2, you don't even know you're by the lake. This is a very tiny place, split between the main park and the water park, but they have an absolute standout coaster with Ravine Flyer 2. This gravity group is an out of control airtime machine and it's worth the trip alone. 
If you're looking for a more classic feel, ride the Comet, a 37-foot PTC wooden coaster from 1951. Steel Dragon is a nice modern thrill ride for a supporting cast, and they have a couple coasters for kids. Beyond that, it's a charming park with lots of family rides, a Ferris wheel, a very long round trip sky ride, and you can walk in there for free, either getting a wristband or paying per ride. Last time I was there in 2018, I think I paid $30 for unlimited rides. That's a great deal. Number six, Mount Olympus, Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. A lot of these independent parks have charm. Mount Olympus has no charm, but Mount Olympus has some awesome rides and that's more important to me. Hades 360 is one of the greatest wooden coasters ever built. All the roughness aside, what a ride. Zeus is an excellent wooden airtime machine. Cyclops has some powerful pops of airtime throughout a short course. And Pegasus. We don't talk about this one. Little Titans is good for kids and the park's only steel coaster. They also have go-kart tracks everywhere and a great water park, all included with admission. Last year, I paid five bucks to get in. Five bucks. And there wasn't even a charge for parking. This place is a resort. Lots of people stay in one of their hotels and get free admission to the park. So yeah, they save about five bucks, but still. You may see some questionable things at Mount Olympus. When I was waiting for Hades, there was a maintenance worker that had to get to the platform underneath the station. But instead of getting there the normal way, he just hopped right over the fence. If he fell, that's like a 40 foot drop. I think everyone has a story about Mount Olympus if they had the pleasure of spending a day there. Also beware, this place is built on a hill so you're gonna get some very steep terrain, especially around the Zeus entrance. Number five, Knobles, Elysburg, Pennsylvania. I think I said the town right this time, probably the first time ever. Anyway, this is another one of a kind park. The parking lot, campground, picnic areas, amusement park, and back areas all blend in seamlessly. You can be walking around the park and suddenly realize you're not in the park anymore. These shots of Phoenix are from a back area of the park. At least I think so. I'm not sure if I was allowed back there, but there are no fences, so who knows. Knobles is a lot of people's number one when it comes to independent parks, but I haven't been quite as impressed. I'm not the biggest fan of Twister, a big in-house wooden coaster that runs super smooth, but people who love lateral seem to think this is the park's best coaster. I've been here three times and never gotten a ride flying turns. One day, I'll finally do it. It's my new life's mission. For me, Phoenix is a standout coaster at the park. Such a fun, airtime packed wooden coaster. Impulse is also a good ride. They're one modern steel coaster. This place has a great atmosphere. Free parking, free admission. The rides only cost a few bucks a ride, or you can get an all-day wristband. They did jack up the prices in 2021. Phoenix and Twister used to be three bucks. Now it'll run you 350. That being said, if you compare that to other paper ride coasters, it's still an amazing deal. The whole park looks great. It just all feels natural. One last thing, if you can take that chairlift to the top of the mountain, I think you should do it. It offers some amazing views. Number four, Silverwood, Athol, Idaho. I've only been here once and I was kind of hoping for more. That being said, this is still a top four park on the list for what it has. Two very strong wooden coasters. Timber Terror has great airtime in the first half. Tremors makes great use of tunnels and has a very long layout, but Aftershock is my favorite coaster there. This Vekoma giant inverted boomerang with the original trains, 192 foot spikes. Ride this in the back row for the best experience. They also have the original modern inverting coaster, Corkscrew, and they just got an RMC Raptor I haven't gotten a ride yet, Stunt Pilot. When I was there, the operations were pretty slow and they were using one train on everything. That's something they can improve on. In addition to this solid lineup, they have two of the better flat rides that I've ridden. They also have some very affordable food options. I paid a couple bucks for an ice cream cone that I would say was probably like a foot tall. I know a lot of you don't find yourself in Northern Idaho too often, but it's worth it if you've never been. Number three, Holiday World, Santa Claus, Indiana. Here's another one that some people may put number one, and I wouldn't blame them if they did. Three excellent wooden coasters. The Voyage is one of the most elite coasters ever built, one of the most ambitious coaster projects ever, and it paid off. Raven also won a bunch of golden ticket awards in the early 2000s. A rapid fire airtime packed, albeit much shorter ride than Voyage, but still great. Legend is a coaster I didn't like for years until I rode it in 2020, and it delivered an insane and smooth ride. Then you have Thunderbird, and that's the best B&M wing coaster in America. It's not even close. It's also one of the very few launch B&Ms. Holiday World has a great atmosphere, a great water park, possibly the best in the country. Free soda, free sunscreen, free parking, reasonable admission price. They throw a great enthusiast event every year. I have no complaints. I just think the other two parks offer a little bit more. Number two, Lagoon, Farmington, Utah. Up in Northern Utah, you have this major coaster oasis. Lagoon has 10 coasters, only three of them geared towards kids. The rest are pretty legit and enjoyable rides. Spider and Jetstar are small but intense. Roller Coaster is a really strong wooden coaster and that's over 100 years old now. Colossus the Fire Dragon brings the positive Gs. Wicked has some insane moments, but Cannibal is the big boss. One of the best coasters I've ever ridden. Lagoon also has a good collection of flat rides. Everything is reasonably priced. Their ops are pretty quick. They do lack queue space for most of the rides, which is weird, but that's by no means a deal breaker. You also have access to the water park with your admission. I think Lagoon combines the quantity and the quality, and that earns it the number two spot over Holiday World. Number one, Hershey Park, Hershey, Pennsylvania. 
I know there's Knobles and Holiday World, but I have to imagine that most people would agree that Hershey Park is the best independent park in America. It's not one of these small family-owned parks. It's owned by the Hershey Corporation, so it's going to have the advantage in resources, and it shows. The park is packed with B&Ms and Intamins. Also, three wooden coasters, 14 coasters total, including a little bit for all ages. You also see this with the Triple Tower, offering different levels of thrill based on your preference. There aren't too many parks out there that appeal to as wide of an audience as Hershey Park. Some people may come here just for the chocolate, or to grab one of those ridiculous milkshakes. But if all you want to do is ride coasters, Hershey Park is a gold mine. This isn't my favorite park. It's not even in my top 10. This is mainly because its best coaster is barely in my top 50, but it has a bunch of others in my top 100. That's a solid lineup, even though it's not elite. Even though I rank this lower than most people would, it's still the top independent park that I've been to. Let me know what you think of these parks, and which independent parks that you would consider your favorite. If anything on this video seemed out of place, or if there's something that I left off that belongs here, let me know. Parks like the Adventure Dome, Enchanted Forest, and Wonderland got some consideration, but in the end, they weren't top 10 worthy. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, and give me a sub for more content just like this. Later this year, I will rank my top 30 parks overall. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Also, my new baseball channel, if you happen to be a coaster and baseball fanatic. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.